Hey everybody, Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles, California for a much anticipated main event. 12 rounds among heavyweights between these two great warriors. Viking Warriors really keyed in for this one. You can see it as he makes his walk to the ring. He's making that final walk that separates man and warrior, soon to be in battle there in the ring. Gentlemen, one thing, protect yourself at all times. Okay, let's catch him up. Opening three minutes of this scheduled 12-rounder. During your training career, is this the type of matchup that you liked when you had a power puncher facing another power puncher? No, I hated it. I never wanted to fight a big banger. I wanted to be the only guy in that ring that brought that to the party. Able to defend, and then... Oh, oh, he is stunned. He could go down. He's in bad shape. Maybe a punch or two more, and he's on the canvas. Teddy, what does he need to think about now? Well, one of the things that he can't think about, he'd love to run away. He'd love to get away from what's hurting him. His legs are not solid enough, so he's going to have to find a way to tie up. <clears throat> nice work with the left hand. And another one lands. Throws a counter punch there. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by bad intentions. No feeling out round here at all. These two are slugging it in round number one. Reminds me of the fireworks display on the 4th of July, and the rockets just keep coming. Halfway through round number one. Well, he's going to hope that his vision holds up and isn't impaired because there's swelling now around his eye. Teddy, early on in a fight, I will often turn to you and ask you what's the one thing we should look for out of this fighter. But in his case, I think it's pretty obvious, right? It's the jab. Yeah, more importantly, it's obvious to him. He understands that. You know, he understands he's not real strong in other areas. So he understands he has to be really good in this area. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. What does a fighter need to do to really build the foundation to a great career? Well, first of all, they have to have the desire to have that great career. There has to be something in them. There has to be coal in that furnace to burn and to burn later on. Maybe something happened to them in their life. Maybe through their parents, maybe through neighbors, maybe through coaches. Somebody told them they were never going to make it. And they go in their mind that they're going to find a way to make those people wrong. Good way to protect the midsection. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. So here we are, a new round underway, and in that last round, he got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. Now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. He 
He's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Bad intentions, his vision is being compromised here. That swelling around the eye is worsening as the fight continues. Well, right now, he has to use every advantage he can. You're right, he's at a disadvantage. So now, he has to position himself in the ring, every inch of that ring, where he keeps his opponent in a place where he can't throw punches towards the bad eye, where he positions himself where the good eye is always in a place where it could be used. Blocks that punch. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Very clever move there. A little defense turns to offense. The counter punch by bad intentions. Not able to land the uppercut. Showing you some defense there with the block. Oh, and there you go. Bad intentions is in a bad spot right now. He's been stunned. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Back to fight action as a new round is underway. Of course, in that last round, it was fairly one-sided. He was hit pretty hard, and now he has to overcome that here. Yeah, you don't have to be Notre Dame to know that. I mean, everybody saw, you know, he got staggered, his knees buckled, did a little dance there. But what you have to really know now is know why you got hit and correct that immediately. Carries that punch intended for the head. Look and counter punch. Viking Warriors showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. He's just not concentrating on the body as a target here, Teddy. No, and you know, you wouldn't mind if he didn't have to. In other words, it all depends on the scenario. This scenario says that he should be going to the body and he should recognize that. And that's part of the talent of a fighter, recognition, that you have to recognize where the opportunities are. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Wow, is he defensively sound. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Nice work. Great technique. The combo lands. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counterpunch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay, and he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on.
undoubtedly the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight is his jab. He's so committed to fighting on the outside, and he's jabbing away beautifully. Well, Cuz Damato used to tell me, Teddy, when you're in doubt, jab. Well, this fighter, when he's been in doubt, he's jabbed. When he's been sure of himself, he's jabbed. As you said, he's made a jab fest of this all night long. Last 10 seconds of round number three. As we come to the end of the round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Oh, that's got to hurt. Bad intentions is crushed by a right hand. Showing you some defense there with the block. Scores with the combo to the head. A little defense turns to offense by bad intentions. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counterpunching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Halfway through this round here. We'll see how he holds up with that bloody nose, because a bloody nose in a fight can really cut your win. But he gave some back with the right hand. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot. And then comes back with an uppercut. Nice strike after catching one by Viking Warrior. Good looking counter punch. well after being hit himself <laughs> end of this round Joe and Teddy sitting ringside with you it gives us time to reflect on the bigger picture of boxing you know it was interesting we had a fan walk up to you earlier today and say hey I know you earned everything from the legendary custom auto the great trainer and he said to you What's the one thing you took away from all your years with Cus? What did you say to him? Well, it wasn't a paycheck. I'll tell you that much. Because Cus didn't believe in paying you for that. He said, you're going to college, you're getting a valuable uh, education, and you're not even being forced to pay a tuition. So I understood that. We worked seven days a week, so there was no union. Uh, Cus believed in working on Sundays, so you couldn't go complain and say, I'm being overworked. But I think, seriously, that the most important thing that I learned, of course, that from a technical standpoint, you have to be really secure in those areas. No matter how much talent a fighter has, you have to teach them right, teach them the fundamentals, but mentally. You have to understand that a fighter is really always under fear. And you have to understand those dimensions, those parameters. And you have to be able to find a way to get in there Understanding how he feels mentally and understanding how that can impair his judgment. Stop him from doing simple physical things. 
gets rid of that effort. And there he counters back against his opponent. I don't know how they are keeping this up. They are setting such a scorching pace of action in this fight. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. You see him timing that double jab to the head. Once again to the head. Good stuff in the opening two minutes. A minute to go in this round. Oh, and there you go. He gets away from one and then brings it home with his own. Oh, he is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. I don't know what was said to him in the corner, but now he's the busier man. And he needs to be before any more time goes by. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, Teddy, worst case scenario, a cut has now opened up above his eye. Yeah, and the bleeding, of course, the worst case scenario for a reason, as you said, Joe, because the blood can run into the eye and pair the vision. Come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue and red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. Good block. Oh, very nice. Smart counterpunch there. Yeah, that's beautiful. You make the guy miss, you make him pay. Bad Intentions is sitting here wondering why he's getting hit so much. How about this? You're not moving your head at all. Well, how about don't wonder about it? You were not taught that probably in the gym. You didn't work on that in the gym. Well, it's not going to come to you suddenly when you're in the arena. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. The tactical game paying off. You can see the counterpunch. Yeah, you see the counterpunch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. Halfway through this round. Blocks that punch. Looks like he has some blood under his eye around the cheek. Wow, is he defensively sound. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Not able to land the headshot. Trying to keep his distance, trying to keep his range, but still, you have to be offensive-minded. Yeah, you do. If you're just standing on the outside at the beginning, that's okay, but then your opponent, he's going to walk in on you. There has to be something threatening, something damaging to keep you outside. Lands the counter. Working our way towards the bell. Last 10 seconds of the sixth. Wow! He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. 
I don't know, Teddy. It just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt, where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. Great movement to get away from those punches. Comes right back at him with a left hand. He missed with that headshot. I'm wondering what the opposing corner is going to do here. They got to their man earlier. They were able to rock him. And really, nothing's changed. He's showing them the same exact look, the same exact style that he came here with. Well, first of all, the opponent should keep doing what he's doing. You know, you're landing, you found something that's working. Stay with it until he changes. Keep your head moving. Keeping his hands up, getting way of his opponent's effort. Obviously, what his opponent has done here is the reason that cut is in the shape that it's in. So if you're him, just keep doing what you're doing? Yes and no, Joe. Of course, it's easy to say, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. But what if there's a little change? Your opponent's cut, now he's going to move his head, you figure, a little bit to survive in there. Now you shouldn't go head hunting, even though that cut's there. Now you have to adjust to what's in front of you. Go downstairs to the body a little bit. Then go back up to that head. Don't let that red flag, so to speak, get you to go crazy and forget the body. Very nice defensive guard there. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Just not there, straight right hand off the mark. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. Blocks that punch. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. Blocks it away. Holy cow! Bad intentions has been stunned. So the end of the round. And now a chance to put the pieces back together. He got stunned in that last round. Yeah, well, he has to get those birds out of his head right now. You know, open that cage up and let him fly out there. And the best way to do that is find out why he got stunned. What did he get hit with? And there he counters back against his opponent. Good block. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. The jab has been able to carry the night for him so far. Why so, Teddy? Well, first of all, he's been able to get it off at the right time. His opponent, that sweet spot. You know, you hear about that in, in baseball. You want to just hit that ball in the sweet spot. Well, the jab, he's catching his opponent just as he's starting to get into his rage before he can get off. One of the best rounds you'll ever see.
just great action. Now it's unbelievable. I mean, if you love roller coasters, you go to an amusement park. If you want to see left hooks, right hands, every direction, great chins, great endurance, great heart, you come to this fight. You stay right here. Both right hands landed. Wow! He is... Oh, bad intentions is down. Will he be out? up after that punch put him down on the canvas now he needs to get on that bicycle and stay away from this guy a headshot blocked a stinging counter punch after some fine defense by bad intentions and the round comes to an end we did have a knockdown in that round now teddy if you're in the corner where your man was down on the floor what are you telling him well the first thing that i do is i sit him down i get water on the back of his neck you know i bring him to a sense i make sure that he's clear and everything and then i tell him why he got his backside put on that canvas so he can correct it, and he doesn't go out there and get caught again with the same punch. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. And another one lands. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Well, he's going to hope that his vision holds up and isn't impaired because there's swelling now around his eye. Locks that punch. Good combination landing there. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. 90 seconds into the ninth round. Fine fundamentals, good counterpunch. who was knocked down earlier who as you can see is still going about his business the exact same way let's turn the tables a bit if you're opposite that fighter what do you want to do what you want to do is just keep going and hey you know that old saying if it's not broke don't fix it well he's giving it to you keep taking it keep going to that well until there's no more water if he's giving you an opportunity to catch him with the same thing keep doing it Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. Very nice job landing that counter punch, getting away from one that was coming at him. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. 
This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. Targeting the hooks on each man. Protecting his head well with his guard. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. Bad intentions is in a really bad spot here. I mean, he has been beaten down tonight. He is losing on the scorecards, and he's not showing me anything that says he could turn this fight around. What about you? Well, I think he's got to change his vocation a little bit right now. He's got to become a quarterback because what he has to do is not throw the punch, not right for the receiver, throw it to where he's going to be. I noticed that his opponent pulls back. Well, throw that punch behind him, and maybe he'll walk right into it. Crashes home a body shot. Great counter punch. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Bad intentions is conditioning is not serving him well at all. What does he have to be conscious of here, Teddy? Because I think his gas tank is nearly empty. Well, what he has to be conscious of now is to control what he can control. There's no gas stations. I don't see any around. Do you, Joe? No. So he's not going to get more petrol. He has to slow the pace of the fight down. Make it a slower fight where he can survive. Defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Underway it gets us thinking how much more of this will we see? Hard to envision this fight going the distance with how lopsided it's been. Good defense just covering up down low. Able to dismiss that body shot. If I'm his opponent, I look at that eye and I say, that's the magic button. Keep going right there, touch it, touch it, touch it, and we could get a stoppage here. Well, you're not wrong, but also it could work the other way to your detriment. You could be looking for that spot so much that now you're throwing one punch at a time. You're looking just for that. You're not doing the other things. You're not using the jab to set it up. You're not going to the body. And maybe you actually allow your opponent to survive longer because he could see that one shot coming. He could avoid that one shot. Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better.
minutes ago in what has been a memorable round. Great stuff from these two. He covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Comes right back with a shot of his own. Blocks that punch. I don't know, Teddy. It just feels like one of those nights, one of those fights where somebody's getting hurt where this is not going to the judges' scorecards. I feel like I'm in Coney Island watching one of those hot dog eating contests where somebody's going to try to eat 50 of them, 60 of them. In other words, he's not worried how he's going to feel at the end of the night. Get out of the way! A good block. Both men accurate with their hooks against each other. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counterpunch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay. And he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. against the ropes. Blocks the headshot. The twists and turns and the non-stop battle. It continues on as we've reached the one-minute mark to go. Keep, keep the head moving. Locks it away. He defensively sounds. <laughs> nice strike after catching one by Viking Warrior. Last round Ladies of an entertaining fight. The now, the judges' scores. Decision. Let's send it up to the ring announcer. Viking Warriors, your winner by unanimous decision, Teddy. Well, the question from the beginning was, could he get inside and make it his kind of fight? He did. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.